Hi folks, um, last night I put my moth trap out and so I thought what might be nice to show you was um, um, what, what I caught in it last night and I thought as well I'd explain how it works and um, how you can have a go. It's actually very very straightforward to um, have a look at moths. Um, you, this makes it easy um, but when I started out all I used to do, um, I think this was the book that inspired me to have a go at looking. Um, all you need to do is have a light and moths will um, come to the light and I'll explain why they do that in a minute. Um, so what I used to do when I started out was I used to go out into my garden, put a sheet out on the lawn and then take my bedside light out and just put that on the lawn and just sit out for the evening and it was really pleasant. You'd, you'd have a nice evening out and uh, gradually all these beautiful creatures would come. Um, so um, yeah another um, easy way to do it, I, I do it inadvertently, I expect some of you do it as well, is uh, just to leave a light on and leave a window open. So if you leave your kitchen light on or your bathroom light on in the morning there may well be moths that you can have a go at uh, identifying. Um, but if you want to do it in a slightly more sort of structured organized way what you can do is have a trap like this one and the way this works is you have a light source um, this uses what's called a mercury vapor bulb which is really super bright uh, gives off lots of light lots of ultraviolet light which is what the moths are using to navigate by um, that sits there and the moths they're not actually attracted to the light. The interesting thing is, um, what's happening is, of course, if they if they loved light, they could just come out during the day, but they're flying at night to avoid um, predators, avoid birds, I think. But of course, what's happened is that bats have evolved, so there are some predators around which uh, will gobble them up. But what they're trying to do is use light to navigate by. Now, what happens, of course, if you've got light far away, is that that acts as a fixed point, and so moths have evolved to use the stars and the moon as fixed points, so they can fly in straight lines. Um, and of course, if a very bright light, an electric light or whatever, um, confuses them, what will start to happen is, imagine if that was the moon, or, or the moth was thinking that that was the moon, and was trying to keep that to one side and fly in a straight a straight line what happens is of course because the moth is near to it it ends up flying around it and it flies around and around and around and then eventually thinks oh it's in uh, there's lots of light I must go into camouflage mode it thinks it's daytime and that's where this um, part of the uh, moth trap works so the moths fly around the bulb go into camouflage mode and then drop down inside and it doesn't harm them, they're just hiding away in there. And what I've done is I've put um, lots of egg boxes in there that they can um, hide away, lots of little nooks and crannies, so we can have a little um, look in those and see, what, uh, see what's in there. So um, that's the way it works. You can buy them or you can make your, make your own. You can um, get, the, get the bulbs and the electrics online. It's quite a straightforward thing to do. Um, but should we have a look? Let's see what's inside. So last night it was quite um, cold, a little bit windy, which isn't ideal mothing conditions. What the very best weather is is when it's that kind of very still, very humid, and you know it's good because you get lots of flies around that in that kind of in that kind of weather. That that's when you get loads and loads of moths. Um, we're in mid to late June, which is peak time. Um, but we haven't got any of the really big moths. I've already had a little peep. We haven't got any of the really big um, hawk moths, so I might put the trap out again and, and have another, show you another time. But anyway, let's have a look. There's one thing I need, which is my glasses. Oh, and I'll tell you another thing that um, is very useful if you want to get into this, is getting yourself a good um, identification guide. So you'll need one of these, and this is um, a guide to the macro moths which you might think means the big moths, which it, it sort of does, but there's also a guide, where have I put it, there it is, for the micro moths. 
and some of the micro moths are quite large. I had one in here a little while ago called a small magpie that actually escaped, it flew away that I was going to show you. But um, yes, so there's about um, 800, I think, macro moths, the bigger ones, and then about another thousand, I think, something like that, of the micros. So 2,000 species, piece of cake. Right, let's have a look then, what have we got? So, it's not a huge haul, but still some nice things to show you. Look at this lovely one. This one, they're quite um, skittish, it might fly away. But this is in a little, in a group called the uh, Geometers, and this is called Clouded Silver. Have a look at that, really pretty, delicate little moth. Can you see that? I'm worried the wind's going to catch it and make it fly away. But yeah, Clouded Silver. That's a oh yeah, look, there we go. It's probably going to go. Yeah, there he goes. And then, what else am I going to show you? Let's show you this one. This is a Noctu uh No, Arctuidae, I think these are in. Anyway, this is... Um, uh, can you see that one? A buff ermine. Looks like a uh, an ermine fur coat. There's a white version of this as well, very similar, closely related, but that's buff ermine. See that one? Very pretty, lovely colour. And then, oh look, have a look at this. So that isn't a moth, that's a caddis fly. So you know the things that you get at the bottom of ponds that um, you might have seen them that cover themselves in um, little grains of sand or bits of vegetation, that's what they turn into. So they look quite similar to a moth, um, you can distinguish them, look at those great big long thin antenna that it's got there. Okay, so that's a caddis fly. Put that one to one side. What else have we got? Oh look, okay. What's that one folks? Remember that one? That's a buff ermine. Oh and also, tucked away in here, I wonder if I can get down to it without it flying away. It might stay in camouflage mode hopefully. Yeah, this is a very common moth at this time of year. Can you see that one? That one's called a heart heart and dart. It's got these patterns on the backswick's wings which um, is supposed to be shaped like a heart and a, a dart. Um, the, the way I recognize it, can you see the front of its sort of the front of its thorax above its head? It's got a dark stripe there. Looks like a, a kind of mono brow I always think. So that's how I distinguish that one. That's a heart and dart. Then we've got, oh look at this one, this is really pretty, I hope the camera can catch the colours because this is one of the most beautiful moths, it's not huge but it's got these incredible um, colours on it, it's got, it's, it's metallic but it's green, it's kind of got this iridescence, it's called burnished brass and it is just the prettiest, I don't know if the light is catching that. It's incredible. I wonder why, how has it evolved to be that colour? There are some really beautiful moths. Some of them are a little bit subtle, but they're just fantastic. That is so pretty. Put that one back. So what I'll do in a minute with all of these is I'll let them go. I'll shake them into the vegetation so they can stay hidden. Um, so they're, they're all going to be safe. Oh, and one more to show you. Look at this one, this one's quite an impressive one. Brilliant camouflage, look at that. So if that was lying on the ground in some, in some dead leaves, you'd never spot it, would you? So this one is called the Drinker. Um, they've got great names, haven't they, moths? And this one is named because the caterpillar, I think it's the caterpillar, 
has the habit of um, crawling up onto leaves and drinking from droplets of water. People have noticed that. So that one's called the drinker. Let me get that one a little bit closer. Can you see that one? Oh, and then one more on the bottom I've just noticed. There's another one there, which is a Hebrew character. Another good name. Excellent. Right, I think we will stop there. I'll try another night, I think, because I'd like to get you to show you some hawk moths because they're really special and there's a few around at the moment. So, Okay, thanks very much for watching and I'll uh, talk to you again. Bye.